a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. This is going to be a wordy one, a lengthy one. Trust me, I'm so passionate about Massa and the nixtamalization process. Uh, it's going to come across. So if you're not into this, you may not enjoy it. And if you're fascinated as I am, uh, you are going to enjoy it because basically Massa is that cornerstone. It's the quintessential uh, ingredient in Mexican cooking. I think Massa and Mole are probably the two things that make Mexican food so very unique. And I think most of my Mexican friends would agree with this. I mean, you don't have your tamales, atole, you don't have that without Massa. And in fact, tamales comes from the word nixtamalization. So um, I'm going to be showing you how to take your corn and nixtamalize it. Now, forgive me for taking so long. We have tested and tested the process of making nixtamalized corn. And it's been difficult finding some of the ingredients. I'll give you some tips on that a little bit later on. It's also been um, complicated working out how to grind the corn down to a perfect massa. We have tried blenders, we've tried um, uh, a grain mill that I have, that didn't really work. We've done it through the meat grinder on the finest settings, that didn't work. Eventually we found, oh, I also tried a mortar and pestle, well, that was just too long-winded and complicated. Eventually we found a, a good food processor will give you pretty good massa. Um, it puts a lot of stress, so you do need a, a very good food processor. I haven't got one with me when I was traveling, so what I decided to do was to order this absolute beauty from the USA. This is a corn mill. They're made by Corona or Victoria. Uh, most of the older Mexican families will know these. They had them in the house, and this is perfect for making masa. Um, I'll do an unboxing of this later on. Unfortunately, the box came pretty battered, and there was a few little bits that were damaged inside, which is a bit of a shame, but it's still very functional, and it's a beautiful machine, and it makes really, really good massa. Yes, it's a little bit long-winded, but it produces great massa. And I don't think actually the process of making it is that difficult. If you're doing it daily or weekly, it's a lot of fun. And massa does freeze, by the way, so if you make it in, in bulk, you can always take your beautiful fresh massa and store it. The next complicated thing is that I couldn't get the white corn uh, that's often used for masa in Mexico, but they do use the yellow corn as well. And this is just a simple yellow corn and I found this tastes really delicious. So contrary to what a lot of people told me, you can't use, it doesn't work as well as the white corn. This yellow corn does. And this is just the sort of corn they use for farm feed and things like that. Make sure it's food grade, suitable for eating. You're gonna need this corn. It's the only real ingredient apart from water and another product that's quite difficult to get, which is calcium hydroxide, uh, often known as pickling lime. Uh, you can buy this on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. It's uh, called pickling lime. It's used for making pickles. Calcium hydroxide is highly alkaline. It's a little bit caustic, so you do have to be careful. Don't go breathing this stuff in, but we're going to be using this um, to nixtamalize our corn. Uh, what is nixtamalization? Well, it's a process where a highly alkaline liquid solution basically uh, changes the structure of the corn to make uh, a lot more uh, digestible. It brings out some of the natural enzymes in the corn that makes it healthy. I told you this was going to be wordy. Uh, the Europeans originally, when they started bringing corn in from South America to Europe, some countries brought the corn in, but they didn't bring in the nixtamalization process. And what that meant was as they became more dependent on corn, they weren't getting the nutritious goodness. And some countries had some really uh, periods of time when, uh, when the whole population became very sick because without nixtamalizing your corn, uh, there's no real nutritional value in corn. So it's a really important step. How it was discovered? We're not really sure. Nobody fully understands whether uh, many years ago nixtamalization was discovered. If you, if you actually take wood ash from a fire and add it into water, you get the same sort of uh, process as this. It will, it will give you a very high caustic content. So maybe it happened by accident. Um, and you can still do that, actually. A lot of people still can use burnt wood or burnt seashells uh, to get uh, calcium hydroxide or, or a similar sort of product which will nixtamalize your corn. 
So you can see I'm really fascinated by this and, and the process and I'll explain to you as we go along. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to take two cups of my yellow corn <coughs> and I'm going to explain to you how to nixtamalize this and then we're going to make some of the most delicious masa and as I said there are so many dishes that work with masa. Uh, we in the West tend to substitute corn um, with wheat in many of the dishes and it really doesn't taste the same. Once you nixtamalize corn, it becomes really buttery, really delicious. You can smell it during the process. So let's get on and make some nixtamalized corn. Now I'm going to work with a couple of cups, that's about a pound, 450 grams of my beautiful yellow corn. Now if you can get the blue or the white corn, go for it. It's all about experimenting with what you can get, but the yellow works just fine. I have a pan here, I've got about two cups of corn, so I'm going with six cups of water and I just put this corn into the water. And into the water I'm going to put about half a tablespoon of my pickling lime. Now be a little careful with that pickling lime. It is a little bit caustic, so you don't want to be breathing in the powder. I've got to take this over to the stove now and we're going to bring this up to a boil. I want you to watch how the corn color changes as it heats up. Now I'm just dissolving the lime into the warming water. What I wanted to show you is how the alkalinity of the water changes greatly the color. I hope it shows here on the camera. It's gone to a really rich buttery yellow and the smell coming off the corn is rich and buttery. I'm just going to dip a piece of litmus paper into the alkaline water so we can take a reading and you can see that it's coming in around about 12 to 13 so that's a fairly high alkaline content in the water. Now when the water comes up to a simmer like that, I want us to continue to boil this for 10 minutes and then we'll turn the heat off. Now many of you might find this interesting, I know I did. I'm just going to take a control sample, a quarter cup of corn, and I'm just going to add some water in the pan and bring it to a boil. Now you will notice that the color doesn't change anywhere near as much as it does in the alkaline water. And you'll have to take my word for it, there isn't that rich buttery smell coming off the corn either. Now we can just do a litmus paper test if we dip that into the water. As you would expect, it's coming up at seven, which is neutral. Now you don't need to boil that for any longer than 10 minutes. When it's completed, I'm just gonna pop a lid on so now all we need is some patience. We're going to leave this for at least eight hours overnight. It can go a little bit longer, 12, 14 hours is perfectly fine. And then we can start to process this corn into perfectly beautiful massa. So the following morning, the lime has continued to affect the corn. You can see it's still this lovely, rich, buttery color. Don't be tempted to put your hands into the lime water. It's pretty caustic. It can burn a little bit. Now I've added a lot of water into the pot and now you can get your hands in there and we just want to rinse this through until we've got rid of all of the lime. And what you need to do is rub the corn together and you'll see the outer skins of the corn are starting to come off. So just continue to rub the corn together. The skins will float in the water and then we can just pour them away. Now you want to continue to do this until most of the skins are gone. You don't have to be particularly picky about this. We haven't got to get rid of 100%. Now with the corn rinsed and most of the skins removed, we've got this beautiful, clean and fresh corn and it's no longer in an alkaline solution, so it's quite safe to handle. Now if you look at a piece of corn that's been actually soaking overnight, you can actually put your nail into it and break it open. It's almost soft enough to break just under the pressure of your fingers. So now it's time for us to get and make masa. Now I've set up my grain mill. As I said before, it does actually work really well in a food processor. Uh, you need to have a fairly strong food processor. This mill here will actually clamp onto a, a table or a work counter. It's got a little silicon pad to protect it. Once we place the hopper on the top, we're gonna start to pour the corn in and crank the handle. Now I've set the mill wheel to its tightest setting. So I'll get a very fine masa on the first pass. You really don't want to be putting the masa through a second time. It's ideal if you get the perfect consistency in one pass. Now ordinarily you'd have the guard on here. Um, that would stop the masa that's coming out through the top from just falling all over the place. 
I'm going to leave the guard cover off so we can see what's going on. And you can feel straight away that's already turning into a beautiful mass of dough. You want to make sure it's going through fine enough that you can use this as a dough. It's a little bit dry, so I'm going to add a splash of water in here. Now I think what I love about this particular grinder, it doesn't take that long to go through this whole pound of corn. So it's not that complicated, not that difficult. And if your arms get tired, you can always change hands. Now sometimes I'll just use a wooden spoon to encourage the corn down into the hopper. So very quickly we've ended up with all this beautiful massa. Now if it feels just a little bit dry you can add a splash of water. Don't add too much. You'd be surprised how quickly it gets too wet. But what we're looking for is this gorgeous soft and very smooth massa. Now I think it's quite interesting to note that we now have 760 grams, that's about 1.6 pounds of massa from about 450 grams, that is one pound of grain. So the moisture that's absorbed during the cooking process and the grinding process gives us quite a bit more dough than we started with. Over the next few episodes of Steve's Kitchen, we're gonna be putting this matter to some really fascinating use. Even some things that maybe my Mexican friends will not have realized you can do with this delicious, rich and buttery masa dough. So I hope you're gonna join me for that because like I say, masa is basically the foundation of Mexican cooking. And if you've not had it before, it's worth the effort, trust me. It isn't a lot of work to make homemade fresh masa and uh, the payoffs well, they're tenfold. So with that said, we've made our fresh massa and I'll see you very shortly for another episode of Steve's Kitchen. Be good, see you then.